So um, I'm joined now by um, IPS uh, officer, Mr. V. Balakrishnan. He is uh, currently the Deputy Inspector General of uh, uh, the Trichy Range. And he has something very interesting uh, uh, that he has just launched recently. And this is a fallout of the custodial deaths in Satangulam. Uh, now, Mr. Balakrishnan, uh, is no stranger to police reform in the sense that when he was SP Madurai uh, a few years ago, he had initiated a program for, uh, uh, you know, to deal with the mental well-being of police personnel in the district. Um, so uh, thank you very much for speaking with us, uh, Mr. Balakrishnan. Now, you have decided to remove 80 police personnel uh, in Trichy because their uh, track record with the public in interacting with the public has been found wanting you're also going to ask them to undergo a cognitive behavioral therapy course can you explain what it is exactly that you're planning to do and why you're doing it? yeah uh, so we have uh, shortlisted 80 police personnel uh, based on uh, different sources of uh, information uh, like uh, we relied on the uh, previous incidents in which uh, there are, have been allegations against uh, police personnel about uh, misbehavior with the public. And also, we have taken the list from uh, special branch and the field officers. Uh, the 80 police personnel in uh, five districts in Trichy range uh, includes all the ranks, uh, not, only, uh, not only police constables, but also uh, the uh, sub-inspectors, inspectors, and even DSPs. Deputy uh, Superintendent of Police. So uh, basically, um, these uh, police personnel um, will be subjected to a yeah, uh, predefined cognitive, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy program so as to bring behavioral change. Um, and uh, once the course is completed, once they uh, complete the course, and if their progress is uh, satisfactory, then uh, they will be slowly reintegrated into the um, uh, you know regular duties uh, con uh, and they can uh, deal the uh, deal with the public as of now we are taking them off um, duties which has got a direct uh, uh, public contact immediately we are taking them off so when you did uh, collect all of these uh, names uh, and found that their behavior was found wanting in your own words um, what kind of behaviors have they exhibited yeah, basically we have relied um, uh, uh, on few parameters like uh, uh, how do they talk to the people? Are they talking to the people in a uh, friendly tone or in a harsh manner? Are they abusing the uh, you know public when they come to the police station to give petitions or when they are out on the field uh, to do the beat duty? Whether they are talking to the uh, you know the public in an abusive manner? And um, then again, um, the police personnel who have the tendency to uh, use the force unnecessarily and disproportionately. Uh, we have uh, basically relied on two, uh, two aspects, which are uh, the legal uh, parameters uh, to measure the use of force. That is the necessity and the proportionality of using force. Uh, so if uh, they are found wanting in, uh, in these two, uh, uh, standards of use of force, then they have also been included in this uh, list. Basically, uh, based on these three parameters only, we have taken the list. So what leads to this kind of behavior amongst the police force? I mean, obviously the police force, uh, especially the, you know, what they call the boots on the ground, uh, they are under a lot of, they are under tremendous pressure, not just during uh, normal times, but especially now that we have lockdown, we have coronavirus, this fear of uh, the virus infecting police personnel. So um, what, you know, what are these stressors that are causing this kind of aggressive behavior? Yeah, there are, of course, multiple factors, as you pointed out. Uh, during normal circumstances itself, uh, they face a lot of uh, uh, stress inducers. Uh, and now uh, during the lockdown, definitely the, uh, you know, the number of factors uh, playing out in this uh, uh, scenario is increased. So uh, definitely they are under uh, stress, but then uh, they have been trained to handle the stress also. Uh, you know, we should differentiate the police personnel in uniform uh, from the common public uh, because uh, the police personnel are uh, trained uh, 
uh, you know, trained uh, police uh, force. So, uh, but definitely there are individual differences. Uh, basically, we are going to address that issue only. We have, uh, based on the list we have drawn up, we'll have a one-to-one -one talk uh, with the uh, individuals to understand the exact reason for uh, such an aberrant behavior. Uh, it could be anything, like uh, maybe a, a traumatic uh, childhood or a violent childhood, it could be anything. Uh, basically, as all, uh, as all of us know, uh, human behavior is conditioned by a lot of factors. And uh, our uh, endeavor will be exactly to find out what exactly the trigger which causes uh, this police personnel to behave in a particular way. And then uh, once we find out, we'll address those issues uh, through the therapy, cognitive uh, behavioral therapy. Uh, so how long uh, uh, is this course actually? Yeah, right now I have planned it for a month. And as I already said, um, only if they show a definite change in their uh, uh, you know, behavior, uh, they'll be uh, again integrated, reintegrated into uh, the uh, duties uh, involving the public contact. Otherwise, they will be uh, um, you know, posted in places where uh, there will be no public contact. Well, this is a, a really welcome uh, move and uh, um, you know, it is probably something that all uh, senior officers need to be doing. But uh, I'm happy that at least it has uh, arrived in the wake of uh, a terrible tragedy um, that has taken place in Tutukuri. Um, do you see, um, uh, let me rephrase this, um, how much of, uh, um, you know, responsibility or for these police reforms that you're trying to bring in, in your uh, range, uh, how much of the responsibility of ensuring that the junior officers behave in a proper manner, how much of that responsibility lies on the senior officers? Yeah, senior officers definitely um, have a role to um, identify aberrant behaviors and correcting them and uh, taking stringent action whenever there is a, uh, there is an incident uh, reported about uh, such misbehavior. Uh, that is so the um, officers uh, senior, at the senior level uh, should look at it. And um, um, I, I, I think the prevention is better than cure as it uh, is, as it, um, is an accepted uh, principle everywhere. Uh, so before, um, the idea is before they commit anything uh, bad, we should stop them, we should find out uh, the reasons and uh, prevent them from doing that. Uh, that is where uh, I think the leadership lies. So that is what we are trying to do. Okay, my final question to you, and I'm going to let you go after this. Uh, um, uh, so uh, what happens uh, in, in the case of, uh, uh, you know, once this cognitive behavioral therapy is done and uh, you either reintegrate them or put them on test duties, let us assume if they're not in a position to interact with the public. Um, in the future, would you be planning to train younger people who are coming into the police force, recruit, you know, during recruitment to train them in such a fashion that this is prevented from the beginning itself, this kind of behavior? Yeah, already uh, general orientation is given to uh, such issues uh, the, during the training itself. And uh, um, now uh, from uh, July first week onwards, there is going to be a uh, program for the entire uh, police force um, to improve their general interpersonal uh, skills. Uh, of course, um, at the training level, it is done. But then, as I said, already said, individuals differ in their, uh, uh, you know, ability to uh, get trained, and uh, they need continuous training. And one-to-one -one training is possible only at the field level. At the mega level, at the initial stage, it may not be possible, because a lot of things have to be covered in the training. And only when they come to the field, their actual uh, behavior will be uh, exhibited. We can find out the actual nature only when they are given certain tasks, only when they perform uh, certain du duties. So field is the uh, right place to find out their behavior, uh, identify their behavior, and then uh, take corrective action. 
All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Balakrishnan, for uh, your time. And good luck Thank with your you. program. And I hope it uh, yields uh, results. And I hope that this will benefit the public at large as well. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.